Nando tayo ngayon sa Jakarta, ang kasalukuyang kabisera ng Indonesia. Ilang taon mula ngayon ay balak ng pamahalaan na ilipat ang kanilang kabisera sa East Kalimantan. Maliban daw kasi sa unti-unting lumulubog ang Jakarta, ay mareresolve din ang paglilipat ang hindi pagkakapantay-pantay sa pag-unlad ng mga isla sa Indonesia. Sa taong 2024 ay naasahang nailipat na sa East Kalimantan ang mga ahensya ng pamahalaan ng Indonesia. Pero dalawampung taon daw ang kakailanganin para makompleto ang paglipat ng buong syudad. Ang Indonesia ay may 270 milyong populasyon at mahigit 17,000 isla. Kagaya ng Pilipinas, naapektuhan din ang bansang ito ng Asian Financial Crisis noong 1997. Si Ambassador Sujarat ang military spokesperson ng maganap ang krisis. Siya rin ay naging embahador sa China at defense attache sa Washington, D.C. Naalala pa ni Ambassador Sujarat ang sitwasyon noong mga panahong yun. There is uh, turbulence, political unrest in Indonesia because of the economic situation where because of the economic crisis that the bank are uh, rushed by so many people and then uh, the price of uh, foods high rocketing and then there is some scarcity in the food supply. The people, of course, come to the streets and riots and the protests. And that they are also one to topple down the President Suharto who came down because of this situation that has been long process. So these situations made General Suharto, our president for 32 years, to resign in 1998, 21st May. The dollar rates of Indonesia during that time uh, with one dollar was two thousand rupiah, and then skyrocketing to one dollar to sixteen thousand rupiah. This is very, very serious situation. That this trigger people wants and ask the president to step down. Di tulad ng Pilipinas sa nagkaroon ng EDSA People Power Revolution para mapilitang magbitiw si Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos, kusang nagbitiw da sa tungkulin si Suharto. Quite happy for Indonesia because the President Suharto understand his position and the situation. He is a, is a kind of great statesman. He realized that the people don't want him again and he said I should resign. I could imagine if he want to stand up and then against the people and then use the military to crush the people, Indonesia will not going to be like Indonesia now. It's going to be civil war happening for seven years. Kinilangan daw ng pamahalaan nila na magsagawa ng mga hakbang upang malampasan ang krisis. And we are slowly recovering our economy by, of course, uh, reducing the government spending. I, w I still remember uh, when I was, during the exercise time, 1997, I was the defense attache in uh, Washington, D.C. My staff was uh, 45 staff. I have to reduce it to five because of government budget. So the government understand what to do. Then they, a lot of reducing government budget and then restructuring all the uh, development plan and then tightening the control of the money, tight policy. So this is kind of, uh, of, of our experience, how we are suffering and facing the difficulties during that time. Pagbaba ni Suharto, ang Vice Presidente na si Bacharudin Yusuf Habibie ang namuno sa Indonesia at nagpatupad ng eleksyon makalipas ang isang taon. Dito nagsimula ang transformasyon ng Indonesia sa isang demokratikong pamahalaan. All of a sudden, they open up for reform and then they open up for the political stability where the people can talk, can, can channeling their opinion freedom of speech and uh, free press, uh, then the people understand that the situation has to be worked together. Makalipas ang dalawampung taon, malaki na ang naging pagsulong ng bansa. The trend is, is encouraging since the data since 
2006 to, to, to 2016, I think the Indonesian stock exchange is uh, the most profitable listed uh, equity opportunity. So it can be goes to 60,000 points. So this is the indications that the investment in Indonesia, I should call it Indonesia, is the world paradise for an investment. Because what? Indonesia is the largest population in South Asia. That Indonesia is number five for investors to go after United States, China, India, Japan. And Indonesia are going to be the fifth. So this is the indication that in the coming years, Indonesia will be the one of the most attractive for the investor to come in. Dahil daw dito ay mayroon pangangailangang maisulong ang isang malawakang infrastructure development sa bansa. Indonesia will build the infrastructure cost about more than 4,000 trillion rupiah. It's been double than Indonesia's uh, national budget for the next 5 to 10 years. We're going to develop 10,000 toll road, 10,000 kilometer toll road, 35 megawatts electricity, and then hundreds of harbors and airports. So uh, this is kind of sign that Indonesia is going to develop more and more, and this is going to be attract investment from outside. Nais ang pamahalaan ng Indonesia na magkaroon ng connectivity o mapagdugtong-dugtong ang labing walong libong isla sa pamamagitan ng iba't ibang infrastruktura. Ang kay Indonesian Transportation Minister Budi Karma Sumadi, isa sa mga solusyong naisip nila ang paglalagay ng mga roll-on, roll-off na barko gaya ng sa Pilipinas. One island uh, with another island, uh, far away, is uh, more than... Uh, 300, uh, 500 kilometer. That's why the connectivity means uh, two, with aircraft and with uh, a ship. Yeah. That's why uh, transport minister built many port and many ship port. Yeah. We built uh, in this year more than 20, uh, for the five year more than uh, 20 uh, airport. Yeah. Also, seaport. We built uh, many seaport in the many islands in the uh, Sulawesi, Papua, and so on. Lubhang malalayo daw kasi ang ilang mga isla sa bawat isa. Katunayan, mas malapit pa daw ang Pilipinas sa isa sa kanilang mga isla. For example, we have uh, islands. Uh, the name is Miangas. Miangas near Filip Philippines. Yeah, only 50 km from Philippines and uh, for 400 km from Manado. Oh. We have built airport and also port there. For what? For make it connectivity to uh, Yangas Islands. Hindi daw kasi matatawaran ng kahalagahan ng connectivity para sa turismo at kalakal. Yeah. That's why we give priority to island where far away from, from the center. The second uh, priority is the port and the seaport uh, where uh, they uh, can give uh, advantage for our country. For example, uh, port and seaport for tourism. Yeah. For example, near the uh, Philippines is Manado. Yeah. Many tourists from uh, China there. Yeah. That's why we built uh, airport uh, for a runway more than uh, 200. Uh, uh, 2,800 uh, meter to make it the uh, the white body can uh, landing there. Yeah. I understand we have a direct flight already from uh, Mindanao to uh, Manado. Is it ongoing already? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. hope uh, we have to make it uh, Philippine in uh, Indonesia make it connection mm -hmm. uh, Mindanao to Manado, Davao to Bitung. Mm -hmm. We have to create. But uh, that program uh, not too easy because we make it the logistic is uh, have to enough to the vessel, enough for the aircraft, 
to uh, make it uh, operation. Apat na daan at labing dalawang bilyong dolyares ang itinilagang pondo para matustusan ang kanilang infrastructure program. What challenges do you face in uh, executing or implementing uh, your, your infrastructure <coughs> program? Yeah. yeah. First, money. Yeah. We, that's why we raise money from the private. We make it the PPP project. We make it go public. Yeah. The second is spreading. Yeah, spreading because, you know, uh, in uh, Papua, it's probably uh, 3,000 kilometers from Jakarta. Yeah. The flight uh, four or five hours from here. And the search is uh, about the land. If we acquire the land, uh, we're talking about the freedom. Yeah, that's why we have to make it regulation, but uh, we make it the, the, the regulation, uh, we can negotiate about the price. But after the price is already locked, the, uh, the land have to get for our side self, and we give money to the court. Honestly, uh, if you're talking about uh, uh, 412 billion dollars, not all the money we get from the government. We only get a uh, 60%, and we have to combine with the looking for the other sources. Para maging mas investor friendly ang Indonesia, isang land acquisition law ang kanilang ipinasa at inamyandahan nilang batas uko sa public private partnership. May mga pinapanukalang solusyon naman ang isang prominenting mga lakal at dating Lieutenant Governor ng Jakarta na si Sandiaga Uno sa problema sa kakulangan sa pondo ng pamahalaan. I think the government would need more money from overseas, uh, more money also from the capital market. Um, right now, the country's budget is not going to be enough to build the infrastructures uh, platform that we would need. So we would uh, basically invite uh, more, uh, I guess, uh, corporations that has built world-class infrastructures around the world to Indonesia and bring the uh, capital, not only capital, but also technical uh, know-how, technology, uh, and also the transfer of uh, knowledge to how world-class infrastructure is, is going to be built. I think uh, we've been fortunate that China has uh, channeled some of the capital here, but we need to bring more. I think we need to bring more from the Europe, from even from the Middle East, as well as from, uh, from North America. Um, we are very happy that some uh, long-term funding from the pension plan started to come in, but we need more. Mm -hmm. um, are you not worried that um you will fall under a debt trap? Uh, if you maintain your uh, fiscal discipline and you make sure that uh, the debt level is sustainable, um, some state-owned enterprise now are facing some uh, pressure. to yeah, They need to uh, offload some of their investments because you need cash flow to service the debt. Uh, and I, I come from the private sectors whereby I built um, infrastructures, power, tall road. And infrastructure is a particularly in if you do it uh, correctly, if you plan it properly, if you execute uh, with a world class standard, it would be able to uh, service the debt. Uh, so I would not say that uh, the debt trap uh, is, is uh, con uh, the concern is, is not there, it is there. But if you manage uh, the project uh, very responsibly and making sure that you don't over leverage, uh, I think you should be okay. Mm -hmm. Sa ngayon daw ay kulang ang pribadong partisipasyon para sa mga proyektong pang infrastruktura. You think there is enough private participation in infrastructure development? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Um, if I can uh, uh, basically change something that has been done in the last five years, uh, I would bring more private sectors participations. Now it is too dominated by government and state-owned enterprises. 
So you don't have the competitions. May panukala din ang chairman ng Honorary Council ng Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry na si Suryo Bangbang Solisto. Come up with some regulations that would make it you know, easier. They have to do away with some of the bureaucracies, for instance. Uh, yeah, these are some of the areas that I think they should give priority to. Mm -hmm. Among the incentives they're giving are, are tax holidays. Um, you think this is enough to attract more investors to the country? No, tax holiday alone is not enough. Why? Because we're competing with many other countries that are offering much more than just tax holidays. Some countries are offering for instance, uh, free of land, you know, you don't need to, 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 to buy the land, the area that you need for your investment. They offer paying for the infrastructure that is required, building the roads to get to where the location is, for instance. They would offer, you know, uh, other incentives like a subsidized interest rate, uh, loan from, the, uh, from their financial institution. Isang ahensyang itinayo ng pamahalaan para matugunan ang pangangailangang makakalap ng pribadong puhunan. Si Eko Putro Adijayanto ang Chief Executive Officer ng Pina Center for Private Investment. How we are luring the investment from the private, I think that's a challenge. So I think one of the important or the key initiative from the President himself is basically how to attract the uh, long-term fund to invest in Indonesia. I mean like the pension insurance companies, yeah, uh, especially to the infrastructure uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not easy because uh, used to be <coughs> they are just uh, putting the money in the bank or buying the government bonds. But the president uh, himself is asking yeah, uh, for us yeah, as the part of the government to be really creative in creating the climate of investment. Uh, one of the key initiatives is basically by uh, setting up the organization, uh, yeah, my organization or PINA, uh, Center for Private Investment, as part of the key enabler in actually luring the investment to Indonesia. 70 billion dollars daw na pribadong investments ang target na makuha ng Indonesia. Ilang hakbang ang kanilang ipinatutupad upang maengganyo ang mga private investors. So one of the key is basically giving them incentives. Mm -hmm. So through the Ministry of Finance, uh, as they are coordinating with the other ministerial agencies, we are able to actually promulgate the uh, tax allowance as well as ta tax holidays that I believe is very aggressive even in comparison with uh, neighboring countries like maybe Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So we have some numbers actually like the uh, 20 years tax holidays uh, yeah. 20 years? 20 years tax holidays for certain amount of investment. Itinatag daw nila ang isang one-stop shop para mas mabilis ang proseso ng pamumuhunan ng mga pribadong investors. Pero nagiging problema daw ang mga local government units. We are uh, uh, putting into one, one roof uh, or we call it uh, uh, online or uh, one single submission. It's like a one-stop shop. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a one-stop service. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we are not really satisfied with that because Indonesia is big countries. We have many regional governments from the county level into provincial levels. Uh, we are working really hard on how actually uh, tackling down the regulation in the regional or maybe uh, county levels. Uh -huh. So I think that's uh, part of our you know, uh, struggle. But uh, believe me that I think on the second term of the President Joko Widodo is going to be streamlining even more in the regulations of the you know, investment. Malaking hamon din daw ang iba't ibang batas na nagiging balakid sa mabilis na pagpasok ng private investment sa bansa. Kung kaya't isang batas ang nais nilang maipasa agad. We are now in the process of uh, setting up or putting up the, the, the omnibus law. Yeah, you know, the, the omnibus law is simply streamlining the regulations. So, used to be many regula regulations that uh, constraining the investment in Indonesia, but with the omnibus law, actually we are going to be put it uh, all the you know related laws uh, pertinent to uh, investment in one 
umbrella of law. Mm -hmm. That's going to be simplified uh, mm -hmm. on how actually people are going to invest in Indonesia. Tanggap daw nila na mabigat ang kompetisyon sa Asia sa pangalap ng mga namumuhunan. Kaya naman ginagawa nilang lahat para maakit ang mga international investors. Uh, our neighboring countries like Vietnam, even the Philippines, Malaysia is yeah, is becoming quote unquote one uh, in other ways partner but in other uh, part is basically also competitors. Mm -hmm. But is this is a good one mm -hmm. because with that in mind I think we can you know uh, in uh, comparing our policies to them. Yeah, so I think that's is going to be really uh, necessity if we are going to uh, push through the uh, you know the competitiveness of Indonesia inisa-isa ni Santiago Uno ang mga kailangan gawin ng pamahalaan para magtagumpay ang infrastructure program ng Indonesia so it has to create the right jobs it has to uh, also attract the private sectors on the concept of public private partnership uh, it has to uh, invite more multilateral uh, agencies, uh, international uh, investors to, to be involved. Gaya ng mga ibang bansa, problema din daw dito ang paglaban sa korupsyon. The government needs to show a very, very uh, firm message that uh, the government will uh, increase the fight uh, against corruption and empower anti-corruption body uh, to deliver the job. We need a clean government. And in order to do that, we need everybody to, to be on the same boat and uh, fight the same agenda. Mahigpit daw nilang monitor ang paggamit ng kanila mga foreign loans para maiwasan nila ang nangyari sa Hamban Tota Port sa Sri Lanka. But again, we are watching really seriously uh, about what happened in Sri Lanka. And we try to be really put it in very rigorous way on how actually we are dealing with uh, foreign investors, especially. Because for Pina, we are dealing a lot with equity investor instead of maybe the you know the creditors. Mm -hmm. It will be prudent to be careful that you don't fall into that trap. But uh, uh, sometimes the need for having the infrastructure built is also quite urgent. Uh, that sometimes you just negotiate the best way you can so you can come up with some. Uh, you know, fair win-win you know, sort of contract. Uh, so many uh, people, intellectual or economists, and either political uh, elites are very concerned about the cooperation uh, Indonesia and China in terms of uh, Obor Initiative, One Belt, One Road Initiative. In this case, we should be careful in China, of course. We understand that when we invite the in, in China investment coming to Indonesia, the China is not only bringing the money and technology, they're also bringing their people to work in, in, in Indonesia. That may threaten our job opportunity for our locals. But again, the government take very uh, strong measures and how we should be careful in, in working together with China. What measures are is your government taking uh, to ensure that you know the, the fears are uh, quashed? First is transparency, and then the government are open from any critics and input from the society and the, the member of parliament. So all what is the deal with the China is open to public, and everybody can watch what's happening. So the transparency is very important. This is one of our major to convince the people that our cooperation with China is for both benefit of the people of China and Indonesia as well. Sa ngayon ay mayroon silang 80 proyekto sa ilalim ng public-private partnership. 10% nito ay unsolicited proposals. We have the so-called unsolicited PPP, meaning that uh, initiated by the investors. That's much, much uh, simpler uh, and also much, much faster comparing with solicited PPP that I mentioned before. Uh, because basically the feasible study is coming from the investors, the idea is coming from investors, the part of the government is basically as the, you know, the project owner that or the developer. But actually the money and feasible study is coming from the, the investors. Ayon kay Uno, hindi problema ang pagdami ng mga tao na gagamit ng mga itatayong infrastruktura. In terms of infrastructures, when you build it, the traffic will come. 
So build the infrastructures and then the traffic will come. But before you build the infrastructures, do proper planning, do massive uh, engagements to uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And then when you execute it well, uh, with a world-class standard, then you would have world-class infrastructure. Nitong Oktubre ay sinimulan na ni Indonesian President Joko Widodo ang kanyang ikalawang limang taong termino. Sinasabing ang tagumpay ng kanyang programang pang infrastruktura ay nakasalalay sa uri ng pagtugon niya sa mga hamon sa ekonomiya at seguridad ng kanyang bansa. Anong aral ang mapupulot natin sa karansan ng Indonesia sa larangan ng infrastructure development?